The Fed is buying everything with QE infinity and beyond. After the bailouts come the bail-ins. This is the greatest transfer of wealth in history. It's also the greatest transfer of power in global history. Debt, debt and more printing. The end game is so close, hyperinflation is going to destroy America. Printing money cannot create wealth. Hard assets are the real wealth. Existing global order will fall, a new one will rise in its place. Super states will break up, and new ones will emerge. The dying quivers of financial madness. It's a theater of shadow puppets. A tale of two streets. Main Street, sick, scared and in bed, Wall Street celebrating and having a party, Dow is up. Dow is up. A mad, mad world we live in. These rats are buying everything while most people are in mental crisis. Expect a full-on bailout, nationalization of the entire mortgage bond, debt industry. Boeing up 30% today on news of a deal. Everything must be fixed now. As of this moment, Boeing stock is up about $70 per share from its intraday lows on Monday. See what the hope of massive Fed intervention and massive fiscal stimulus can produce. The rigged casino rolls on. But there are hardly any Boeings or for that matter other airline flying right now. In fact, one of the major airlines just sent a huge fleet of planes to be stored somewhere in the desert. Greatest deception to ever occur on Earth. I just want to know how stocks can go up while everything ate's grinding to a halt. Fiduciary sanity is over and gone until collapse and reorganization occur. Risk can not be eliminated and must be priced, and not by the Fed. We have seen more than enough of how that works out. The Fed is buying it all. And what they buy gives whoever they buy an unfair advantage over others. The Fed has peered into a financial abyss and is panicked. They're willing to support everything, including the purchase of ETFs. So Monday evening, the banks called the government to report that their over-leveraged commercial bond paper was basically worthless. Not a problem. The government called the Steinberg family at the Fed and said please send these poor banks $1 trillion tonight, and also have the Steinberg Fed family go tomorrow morning directly and buy $4 trillion of stocks. Just don't tell anyone. This is beyond a massive fraud. They are not buying the world, they are stealing the world in its abundance. Time to call out the private owners of the Fed. As the game has long been rigged to protect the riggers, those battling to preserve the status quo entered this fight with all the advantages. They will use any means, fair or unfair, brave into the extreme, to prevail. What the Fed forgot to say is they will be providing unlimited money until confidence disappears. This is why all the central banks have been buying gold like crazy since the last crash. That allows them to hit the reset button. The problems caused by mind-boggling amounts of money printing are, even more mind-boggling money printing. End the Fed. You can only throw so much fuel on the fire before the coals burn out. They are exacerbating the problem ten times every time they throw money in and force it to go up. Paying debt with inflation. Did the Fed learn that from the Weimar Republic? Mr. Market is going to get angry soon, and the worst grizzly bear in the forest is going to start attacking the novice hunters. Moment by moment as the economy is closed. We're all falling behind in bills we'll never be able to catch up on. Good luck, America, gone forever. It looks like the price tag for the $6 trillion stimulus bailout package may already be up to $10 trillion. At this point, it really doesn't matter how much money the Fed prints to fund this nonsense as soon the money will be practically worthless anyway. The toilet roll is about to be more valuable than the US dollar. They've been doing everything they possibly can to crash it, and every time they look back and go, oh crap, it still hasn't crashed. Then they turn around and plan an even more unbelievable scheme and try that. Future generations will be paying for all this. The Dow Jones reacting positively to a multi-trillion dollar socialist bailout plan is something everyone should get used to. Easy to have that kind of gain when you got the Federal Reserve buying $2 trillion worth of treasuries. So they Fed bought the bubble and now owns the economy. This bailout is a bail-in. They are creating a private, public partnership economy, which is Agenda 21 plan. Means of productions in private hands controlled by the government, by definition, is fascism. The banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies. And the principle of spending money to be paid by posterity, under the name of funding, is but swindling futurity on a large scale. 
The real question is where and when does all this madness end, when the Pandora's box of QE was opened it was so obvious it could never be closed again. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you. No worries. The money helicopters have been replaced with strat bombers. Currency drops will solve the issue once and for all. Understood, citizen? Gold mines and refineries send workers home for safety, where will the new gold come from? Bonds are telling us that the system is cracking apart. Watch out if you don't have physical gold or other assets like land. If QE to infinity does not work, nothing will. A fair value correction is happening. They can add as much as they want to their balance sheet, but eventually it will cause further loss of confidence and a hyperinflation, and not only that, but the Fed will become insolvent. You saw what gold did today, right? That's the opening salvo of what is coming with metals. As I meander around the net reading reactions from Trump supporters to liberal believers of the likes of Schumer Pelosi, one thing is quite clear. People are being led by both sets of liars towards the same goal. A totalitarian state. One where there are no rights, no such thing as equality, militarization, if not in effect, martial law, of all law enforcement, the institution of a degree of surveillance that has never been known before in the history of humanity. Including a system of neighborhood spying, ratting out one another for any reason whatsoever. Complete purchase of the economy, industry and control by the government, the entire health apparatus under the dictates of that same government with no private medicine whatsoever, all private and public interests also made subject to the will of the state, religion, sports, all media. In short, this is it. The end game. The cards are being dealt right now, and most people in this country are salivating at the prospect of a couple few thousand dollars hot off the presses. God help the poor soul who should happen to look up from their mobile device and realize that it is actually just another day, and there's no reason at all to come to this level of panic. The oldest tool in the book has been used well by those in power, make the people fear, and they'll throw away all freedoms willingly. Fools. Fools all. The magnitude of this hoax is impressive, to say the least. People across the entire planet are afraid of a flu virus, and governments have shut down the whole world. It is so obvious it is painful to watch. People are bickering about statistics, bio lab locations, simulation game events, supply chain failures, and yada yada. The US dollar has reached the final stretch of road, and the can simply can't be kicked anywhere now. It's either go full tyranny because of a stupid virus or start a world war. QE5 was used up in one week. Next, open-ended QE6, I'm going to call it QE666, and you can quit blaming this on Chinese bats. This is the Fed, bankers. They are the global vampires that knowingly caused this. We knew the fix was in, when all the public companies began floating corporate debt and using the money entirely for stock buybacks. Ramping an equity market with outrageous prices that they cashed in on. You can never do that with corporate credit, at least to that degree and corporate bonds were ridiculously priced with ultra-low interest rates. Swapping out equity for debt because it was easier to game, pump and dump, and make retail bag holders. Now the buyer's PDs will dump them on the Fed. The currency will be diluted in the pawn shop. No greater threat to productive nations than a central bank unleashed from the restraint of precious metals or strict law. The great pawnbroker is taking in everything. And so established values in every segment of Exter's pyramid are arbitrary and meaningless, including the printed value digit upon the FR notes. What should be a durable standard weight and measure, which preserves every laborer's confidence, has become moment to moment infinitely varyingly, a gauge of confidence in a central bank, not a nation. Primer, how to loot and destroy a great surplus nation. People say that the stock market is a lot like a casino. If I were an owner of a casino anywhere in the world, I'd be very angry at that assumption. If you own a casino you have to follow strict rules, and if you don't you end up losing your license and in jail for a long sentence, something that never applies to the banksters and the Fed who make up their rules as they go along, like children in a playground. Some people think the Federal Reserve Banks are US government institutions. They are not. They are private credit monopolies which prey upon the people of the US for the benefit of themselves and their foreign and domestic swindlers, and rich and predatory money lenders. 
The sack of the United States by the Fed is the greatest crime in history. Every effort has been made by the Fed to conceal its powers, but the truth is the Fed has usurped the government. It controls everything here and it controls all our foreign relations. It makes and breaks governments at will. The Federal Reserve is private and owned mostly by European banks. You can definitely trust them after Greece, Portugal, and Iceland. Bail-ins can't happen in America we are special and bad things only happen to foreign people. If just 1% of banking customers came in on one day and withdrew all their money, it would close the bank. Now the Federal Reserve just announced that banks don't have to have the 10% reserves. That was a warning, keep just enough to pay your bills. Hide some in your proximity. In the event of a systemically important bank collapse, the bank has the legal right to bail in liabilities aka deposits. For starters, the moment one deposits their money in their bank, it is no longer theirs. They have lent it to the bank. It gets even stranger in a negative interest rate environment when one has to pay the bank for the right to lend them money. The banks are about to crash. That is the only reason they are now telling people not to redraw their cash from the banks. Everyone rushed to do that now. In the 1930s, thousands of banks went broke, and depositors lost their deposits, but their mortgages were still on the books for their homes and farms, so they were foreclosed. Then the people just walked away crying, but times are different now. This time the banks will be burned to the ground. This global lockdown will be a time of revelation for many millions. They will truly learn the truth. Fiat is fraud, and central bankers are the parasites. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a small donation. Thank you.